This last video on nonspecific immunity is going to talk about neutrophils, which are able to form nets at the expense of themselves, and the complement systems. This is the last two um, components of our second line of defense within our innate immune response. So, um, everything you really need to know about neutrophil suicide and nets is on this slide, um, but essentially neutrophils are a type of um, white blood cell that um, and essentially um, they sacrifice themselves in order to create these nets which stands for neutrophil extracellular traps. And they're really like big glorified nets. Um, essentially what it is, is it is uh, nucleic acids, which in eukaryotes, right, is much larger and more complex than prokaryotes. And so in order to keep um, all the DNA that a eukaryotic cell has, to keep it nice and organized and compact, it's actually wrapped around these little molecules called histones. Um, so kind of imagine that you are into crafting, maybe knitting, and imagine having just all this different colored yarn just randomly thrown about, right? That would be chaotic, it would take up a lot of space, wouldn't really work, and so you'd want to organize it. And a lot of people will wrap yarn, you know, around something to form a nice, organized ball of yarn. And so that's what we do with our DNA in eukaryotes, except the DNA is the yarn in my example, and histones are the little, whatever it is, people would wrap the yarn around to keep it, again, organized and tight. And so essentially by committing suicide, these neutrophils release their nucleic acid um, and histones in such a way that it acts like a, a net or a tarp um, that is going to cover and trap the pathogen. And associated with this nucleic acid net are very aggressive um, enzymes that are meant to destroy pathogens, specifically bacteria and fungi. And so uh, when these nets are released, again, they trap the bacteria, fungi, and uh, make it so that they are immobilized so that these antimicrobial enzymes and molecules can go and degrade and kill the pathogen. All right, next up is the complement system. And the complement system is a, a bit complicated. Um, it consists of over 30 different proteins. We're only gonna talk about a handful of them. But they work together to destroy bacteria and viruses that invade our body. And there are three different complement pathways. And so I'm gonna kind of sketch out um, one of them because it's the most complex, it's the classical pathway. But the other two pathways kind of just take shortcuts. And so it's the same overall process, but the other two pathways start farther along um, in, the, in the process. But essentially these complement proteins uh, form cascade reactions. And what that means is once one of the proteins is activated, it will then go and activate other proteins, which then activate other proteins. Um, and so it's a sequential uh, cascade response. And in order for a complement protein to be activated, it is cleaved or cut into two uh, smaller components. And so um, as we write this out, uh, we normally just say it's complement protein one, but we'll write it as C1 because the C stands for complement. And so why do we care about the complement system? Well, no matter which of the three pathways um, gets activated, um, it's gonna result in three different um, processes happening. One is going to be um, opsonization, and that is where pathogens with a capsule are going to get coated in molecules that kind of serve as handles. Because remember, organism pathogens with a capsule are sticky and it's hard for phagocytes to be able to grab hold of them to ingest and digest 
the pathogen. And so we have a way of combating that, which is to cover that sticky capsule with um, molecules that will allow the phagocytes um, to better grab hold um, of the pathogen. So that's what opsonization is. And then inflammation, we've already talked about. And then the last one is cytolysis, which is essentially forming holes in the pathogen membrane, uh, making it leaky. And so, but it actually forms more like a pore. So it doesn't just poke holes, it forms an actual pore in the membrane of the pathogen. And so you'll, you'll see a picture of this um, in just a second. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so this is a rather scary uh, picture of the complement system. And so we are going to um, make it a prettier picture. Sorry, y'all, I'm not firing on all cylinders. I have um, really bad allergies lately, and it's just doesn't matter sorry uh so we're gonna make a prettier picture of this but um you'll notice that the three different uh, pathways um, are activated or triggered by different things okay the classical pathway is going to be activated or triggered um, by the presence of antibodies attaching to um, a pathogen there's the lectin pathway which is um going to recognize special sugars called mannose on pathogens uh, surfaces. And then we have alternative pathways, which tends to be triggered by um, the detection of a pathogen's cell wall. So um, let's go ahead and kind of look at the outcomes just to get some pictures of those in our brains. And then we'll sketch out a, in my opinion, an easier to understand um, picture of the complement system. So we already said that one of the outcomes of the complement system is inflammation. Okay, so we've already talked about that. And um, so the next one is opsonization. And um, opsonization is going to um, be this little green dot here. Okay, and so the bacteria is gray. And this bacteria would normally have a capsule, so it'd be able to be hard to, um, I'm sorry, it would be able to evade phagocytosis. But notice that certain complement proteins, and you know they're complement proteins because they start with a C, um, are able to coat the surface of the bacteria and um, <clears throat> um, help the phagocyte be able to attach to it and then um, phagocytose that cell, which is pretty snazzy. So you'll see C3 and C4 are going to have a role um, in opsonization. And again, this is to make it so that our phagocytes can better grip um, the pathogens. And then here is that MAC, the membrane attack complex, that pore that I was telling you about. So a handful of complement proteins um, kind of join forces and together insert themselves into this membrane forming a pore, um, which is gonna of course disrupt the membrane's function of regulating what goes in and out of the cell and cause chaos and eventually um, kill the pathogen. So again, that's another outcome of the complement system. So let's kind of draw our own picture here. <clears throat> and um, see if we can help this make a little bit uh, more sense. So I'm gonna start with um, the classical pathway just because um, it is going to be the most involved. And um, so it is going to involve the most number of complement proteins. I'm trying to grab my pen and get everything working. And so um, C1, complement protein one, is going to be the first protein involved. And when C1 is activated, okay, it is going to go and activate two other complement proteins, C2 and C4. 
Now for these proteins and the rest that we're going to talk about, again, they have to be cleaved in order to become activated, okay? So C2 is going to be cleaved into two different pieces, um, C2A and C2B. And I'm writing it this way for a reason, and you'll see why here in just a second. Um, and then C4 is also going to be cleaved into two different pieces. C4A and C4B. Now, C2A and C4B are going to join forces. So I'm going to draw a line here to show you that they're two different little proteins, but they come together uh, to form kind of like a pair, to form a larger molecule um, that together is then going to go and activate C3 so that it gets cleaved <clears throat> into its two pieces. And that is going to be C3A and C3B. Now C3B is going to join forces with that larger molecule. So I'm gonna draw this one kind of going up and down. Try and save me some space. So here's our C2A and our C4B. So see how C3B just joined forces to form one larger molecule that are collectively going to go and activate C5. Okay, and so again, as you can kind of see a trend forming here, it's gonna get cleaved into two different proteins, C5A and C5B. Now C5B is actually going to kick off um, this MAC formation. Uh, that that pore in the pathogen membrane, and it does so by recruiting um, four other complement proteins. So it is going to recruit complement protein six, complement protein seven, complement protein eight, and several complement protein nines. And together, they are going to again, go and form those pores in the pathogen membrane, that MAC complex, okay? So it's C5B along with C6, C7, C8, and multiple C9s. So now you might be asking yourself, well, what about all these other, you know, little proteins that were made that didn't form larger molecules? Well, C4A is going to go and have a role in inflammation. Um, C3A is also going to go have a role um, in inflammation, as does C5A. So they're going to help kind of enhance um, that immune response to make sure that that pathogen is going to be um, really contained and um, uh, am eliminated. Okay. All right, y'all. That um, oh, actually, there's one more thing that I forgot we need to talk about. Um, get out of this pen. Here we go. So I'm sorry. There was three things we needed to include in this video, um, but this one's short and sweet because honestly, we don't really know a whole lot about these little antimicrobial peptides. So they're called peptides because they are made up of amino acids, which are joined together by peptide bonds. But notice how small they are, 12 to 50 amino acids. Most proteins are a minimum 500 amino acids. So these are really small little amino acid chains that are able to insert themselves into um, the phospholipid bilayer of the pathogen. So as you can see, this is going to cause it to be leaky. It's going to cause the pathogen um, to lyse. Okay. And so really, that's all I want you to know about these antimicrobial peptides. They're a part of our second line of defense. They cause pathogen cell lysis, um, and they are just small chains of amino acids. All right, y'all, that is it for this video.